I've gotten a number of questions and comments on my plan to paint this old Fornado with this compressor. The question is, does this compressor have enough ca capacity to do that? I don't know. I think it does, but I'm not sure. A few years ago, my son and I painted his car, most of his car. It's a little Nissan Sentra. It's a 1997 model Nissan Sentra. We painted the front clip and the rear clip. We didn't paint the two doors on either side. It's a four-door car. We didn't paint the doors, and we didn't paint the top. Um, and it had no problem getting through that at all. In fact, it, it never slowed down. So that car is probably half the size of this one, maybe two-thirds of the size of this one. So, and that was before I rebuilt this compressor. So, in theory, this compressor has all of the CFM that it had lost over the many years of not being maintained until we got to the point of painting his car. So, I'm going to run a test. I'm going to find out. I went down to uh, our handy dandy Harbor Freight, picked up this uh, Black Widow spray gun. And this is an HVLP one. They had the HTE one, the high transfer efficiency. This is HVLP, high volume, low pressure. Um, I've got experience with the HVLPs. I've never used an HTE, so I wanted to stick with what I knew. I'm, I'm all, already new at doing any of this stuff. And I didn't really want to add yet another level of variables of incompetence that I already have and using something that I've never used before and screw something up. Um, but the question is, does this compressor have enough standard cubic feet per minute to run this gun to paint this whole car? And I, I'm going to run a test and find out. I'm going to, this, this thing is charged up all the way right now until it's shut off. I'm going to run this compressor and this gun set up to spray uh, primer. Uh, it's got a 1.7 tip in it, which is good for primer. And I'm going to run it at about 28 PSI. The tank is set to where I, when I pull the trigger and all the, everything equalizes out, then the tank is putting out 45 PSI. This regulator will cut it down to about 28. So I'm going to just hold the trigger down and let this tank use whatever pressure it's got until it gets down to the point that the uh, tank is not using any more than it's putting in and find out where that equilibrium is. And then I'll know if I've got enough CFM, SCFM to, to use this to paint the car. There's another, another little weird variable. Um, I called Harbor Freight customer service to see if I could get a 1.3 tip for it. And they said, no, they don't make one for this gun. They make one for the HTE model, and they're interchangeable. So I said, well, can I order one for the HTE? No, we can't sell you one for the HTE. So I said, well, thank you very much. I hung up. Waited till the next day, and I called them back. In that first conversation, I had given them the SKU number of this gun. That has a 1.7, so I get another tip for it. I called them back the next day and ordered the HTE replacement tip and nozzle and gave them the SKU number for the HTE model. Somehow that worked. Magic happens sometimes. So one of those is on order, and it should be here in the next three or four days, I hope. So my plan is to use the 1.7 that came in this HVLP gun to shoot the primer. And I'm going to switch it over and put the 1.3 in it, assuming that they're right, that the needles are interchangeable, and shoot the base and clear coat with a 1.3. I've been struggling trying to find out what the difference between an HTE and an HVLP mechanically is. The only difference I've found, been able to identify, is the size of the tip and the needle. So if they put a 1.3 in it, they may stamp HTE on the side. If they put a 1.7 in it, they may put an HVLP on it. I don't know. But in theory, 
Both of them will work in both guns. So that's where I am. So I'm going to get this set up and I'm going to put one camera watching the uh, gauges and the other camera doing this. So we'll see. Okay, I'm going to do something I've never done before. I'm going to run two cameras at the same time. One of them is going to be looking at the gauges on the compressor. The other one is going to be looking at the uh, stopwatch that's on my phone. And I'm going to pull this up and pull the trigger and see how long I have before this thing struggles to keep up. <clears throat> so I think what I need to do, I've got to sync the uh, what that's doing, or what this camera's doing. So as I understand it, I need to put a marker, a clap. Let's do that. So that clap should show up in both videos, and then I can sync them. Well, that's good. Start. That's about 28 PSI right there. Air valve was fully open, the trigger was fully pulled back, the fan is wide open. Forty-two seconds so far. We should be getting down to where the compressor is going to kick on the sounds going from 135 to about. 100 PSI right now. Let's see what that does. It's going to get loud too. Let's
ten and a half minutes dropped to about 85 psi, somewhere around 80 to 85. I think that's more than enough for me to paint most of the car. I had decided that if this was going to be a problem, I was going to break the car up into five sections. I would paint the rear quarter, the top, and the other rear quarter as one section. A door and a fender is another section. The other door and a fender is another section. The hood is a section and the trunk is a section separately. And putting the uh, primer on and the base coat, I wouldn't have to mask anything off. I would just shoot it on. Um, but it looks like what I'm seeing is I've got enough air to do the whole car. What do you think? Oh, the air coming out of that gun was just cool as it could be too. No mist, no water, no nothing. Just clean as it could be. <clears throat> so, I think I'm good. <laughs>